What's up everybody and welcome back. So today we are gonna go over a cinematic look. Now I'd already done this with the curves tool but that was more taking a deep dive into actually how we use the curves tool, how we can get different kind of uh, color and contrast effects out of it and use the cinematic uh, cityscape as an example. One of the questions I got off the back of that was actually how do you do all the stuff that comes before it? So how do I prep my image before putting the curves tool over the top? As usually with this style, it's one of the last things that I will do. So this video is hopefully going to answer that and we're going to go right the way back to the start of the picture, apply all of the settings on and then take what we've done in the curves tool and put this over the top so we can really see how we might prepare one of these cinematic images. So you can see the final result here and the original image over here. Now this obviously kind of looks like it's taken towards sort of night anyway, bit of an overcast sky. As we come across over here, you see we've got our sort of cinematic faded blue look with this really kind of like strong orange that's just seeping through here as well. And you'll notice when you come look between the two, there's actually a lot less color going on in that final one than over here. And what I mean by that is not looking at the kind of the blue and almost the filter look over it, but actually looking at the different colors within the image. Over here, you've got your reds, you've got different shades of like oranges and yellows and things going on, uh, purples as well, greens. And as we come over here, whilst it's actually still very colorful, you've only really got the blues and oranges. So how do we get that look then using the different tools without using the curves? We have to prep the color first and then introduce the curves over the top. So let's hit the reset button and get into it. Okay, so we're back with our photo a lot brighter and where do we start? So I could start with my basic uh, sort of panel edit here, but what I'm actually gonna do is go down to the colors first because I wanna make sure um, I get that effect that I was after where I pull all of my sort of blues into one, all my oranges into one, uh, and that's what I really wanna go for. So I need to edit these colors to remove some, to push some towards different hues, uh, and really align them a lot more. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually just introduce a little bit of blue with the temperature slider there, and I'm just gonna push this towards about 15, so that already gives us a little bit more of a blue tinge uh, to deal with there. I'm just gonna push the tint slightly in that direction too. Yeah, that looks good. So that's already cooled down the image for us. Uh, I vary when I go between these, between doing sort of calibration and hue and saturation first, because there's a lot going on in here, I'm gonna go with the HSL sliders first then. And uh, mostly looking at what the, the warm and the cool tones are doing. So I can see I've got some like reds in here already, uh, some like pinks slightly over here. And then on the cool side, there's already a lot of blues, a lot of this kind of like light blue going on. Um, and down here on the reflections, you can see all of that as well. So I wanna get rid of all of this pink and purple. I wanna get rid of this green. And I wanna make these reds a bit more orange. So we just get stuck with those two tones. So let's come down here and see what we can do here first and then pick up the rest in the calibration. Let's go with these reds and oranges first then. So I'm gonna push my red slider more towards my orange side there. And that's mostly to help this bit out over here. Um, with my oranges, I'm then going to just pull this this way a little bit more away from the yellows and a little bit more towards the red channel. So again, I'm pushing this one that way, that one that way. You might have heard me talk about that before when I'm trying to unify colors, the sliders are gonna go opposite ways to each other. So I pull those two that way with my yellows. Uh, I'm gonna do very much the same. I wanna go away from the yellows and go a bit more extreme on this sort of to around the 56 or so mark. Let's just check what well, that's starting to do there, good. Coming down into my greens, same again, I don't really want any greens in this image at all, so I'm gonna pull right the way across on that there. And now into my blues, I wanna push this one towards, actually I wanna push all of them towards the blues a little bit more here. So I'm gonna raise that one up on the aqua and the blue slightly as well. Uh, then for the purples, I don't really want any purple in this, so I wanna push that towards the blue as much as possible. And you can see that makes a big difference to that right side there and a lot of these reflections. So by pulling that already across, I'm starting to unify the blues and the reflections down here. Um, magenta, I'm gonna leave that alone for the moment there. 
So let's bring it down and now we're going to start sucking out uh, some of these colors. Because remember when we put the curves tool over the top in that last video, when you do curves, you're not only just playing around with the contrast, you are playing around with the saturation a lot. Because as I play around with the curves, it's going to bring those different levels up a bit more. So let's first go in with the warm colors again here. So I'm going to saturate these down just a bit. Because remember, I do want these ones to pop quite a lot as well. So I don't want to suck too much of these out. Now I can always come back and redo this in a bit there. Um, I'm going to pull the yellows down quite a bit because I'm not liking those at the minute. Blues have come down to here as well. Now the blues I'm actually going to go quite uh, extreme on. And that's because I'm after a very deep blue kind of look. So I'm going to bring a lot of blue in with my curves tool to get that real deep blue in the shadows. So I'm just going to pull a lot of this out. Same with the aqua as well. So let's go quite aggressive on that. And then purple as well. don't really want any purple in my image. So I'm just going to suck nearly all of that out. And magenta again, I'm just going to leave alone for the moment. Now onto luminous. So remember, just because we may have saturated color right the way down. So if we took the purple one, for instance, as I move the luminous slider, that still affects whatever color is going on in there. So even though the color is not present in the image, it is still present. It's still present with the pixels there. So the luminous slider still does a great lot of deal. It's just changing the black and white elements that are in there to look darker or lighter. Um, so for instance, I do want that sign over to the right to be a bit darker. I don't want things to be very bright in this. So, so I am going to bring the luminance of my purple down there. And if I go up to the blues, the blues as well, I want to be very dark. I want this deep blue tone. So I'm going to pull this down quite a bit as well. And I'm going to copy the same with the aqua. Bring that down. Coming up then into the warmer tones. So these I want to pop out like a little bit more. So I want my blues to be very dark, uh, kind of cool and moody. And I want the sort of oranges to be the highlights. So I need them to pop a bit. So with my oranges, which are the ones I want the most, I'm going to boost that. And then my reds and my yellows, I'm probably just going to bring down slightly because I want that orange to be the sort of dominating color there. So let's just bring those down a bit. That looks good. And then finally greens. So green on sort of a saturation. Uh, again, I don't really want much to be going on in here. So I'm just going to pull that down slightly because it's still a little bit sneaking forward on that. Um, and also I want to darken any green bits in there just because I, I don't want this color really to be present. So that's helping. This is really the sign I'm looking at for my greens. You can see there's still a little bit going on in there, but we'll see if we can fix some of that with the calibration. Okay, so if I toggle that on and off, very big difference. We've got that sort of saturated, moody look going on. We've not done any basic or exposure fixes yet. This is just purely dealing with the color. So I'm going to pop up to my calibration and I'm going to use some of the tricks that I went over in my calibration video. Watch that if you're not too sure what you're doing with this panel. But all I'm after here is unifying these colors a little bit more. I'm going to start down with the blue primary because that's mainly what I'm going to be playing around with. And I'm going to bring this over to the aqua side a little bit. So you can see the difference as I pull this across, I start to get that blue over the entire image. And this is because we've put the temperature slider on already. So as I pull this way, I really like what that's doing. We can see it's bringing out sort of that aqua blue more in the signs, but you can also see it in the clouds and just all over the image. It almost feels like we're doing that split toning. If I come the other way, well, we've already removed a lot of purple, so it's not doing a great deal. So we're going to come to this side. And I'm just going to decrease the saturation slightly. Remember, saturation on this is just entirely what you prefer. Coming up then, let's go up to the red channel next and just see what we can do with this. Now you can see I've still got some like reds and bits going on uh, within here. And you know, that's, that's cool. The reds do look quite unified, but I want a bit more of an orange feel. So I'm going to push all of the red channel towards the orange sector. And you see, as I do that, everything that's red in the image becomes that nice sort of neon orange. If I went the other way, I get that pink. Now that's absolutely fine. I and mean, if when you're doing your own presets of this, you might want to do three different presets, one of your red, one of pinks, and one of the oranges. 
and then you can just, when you take your photos, flip between all of them and decide which one you feel looks best at the time. For me, I want the oranges, so I'm gonna come up here. That's a little bit too extreme. I still want some warmth in them. So I'm gonna settle for around there. Uh, I'm gonna leave the saturation on that. And then the green channel is the last one I'm gonna tweak slightly, I think. I'm just gonna pull away from that green a bit more because I still don't like that as much. Um, and just saturate that. Okay, so let's toggle that on and off. So you can see there that really unifies those colors. The orange and blues are now popping out a lot more. Before I come onto the curves, the last sort of thing I wanna do then is actually my exposure edit. I find every sort of style I approach uh, my workflow slightly differently, how I go through all of this, but I, I tend to do very similar things in the exposure. Part of when you're creating your style, this panel tends to stay the same a lot for what you prefer. So for example, I like to suck out a lot of the highlights, especially when we're trying to make something dark and moody there. And I like to bring in a lot of the shadows so I can get that extra detail. And again, this is gonna help with my faded look a bit later on. You'll notice I've left sort of the exposure and contrast slides alone for the moment because they're kind of the last things I'm going to come back to do. Uh, whites, I'm going to push these down as well. And blacks, I'm going to pull these up. And that's a very typical thing for me to do is pull the blacks up and push the whites down. That, that's a very typical sort of exposure settings. You can now see uh, things aren't as well defined. Uh, there's this faded look going on a little bit more. So I'm gonna introduce some clarity just to define things a bit, not too much though. And I'm also gonna bring in some dehaze as well. Now again, I want a very moody look overall. So I'm just gonna suck out the vibrance and the saturation on this. And that is once again, because I know I'm gonna introduce a lot more with the curves tool. Now I might come back to that and do a bit more of a global edit on the saturation overall, but I'm just gonna leave it there for the moment. Um, looking at this, I think I'm gonna leave that alone as well until I come after the curves and I'm purely gonna use that to do some things that I was too scared to do. So let's take a look at the curves. Okay, so the curves are gonna have the biggest effect on all of this. I'm not gonna go into great detail on this because I already have in one of my other videos. So if you wanna learn more about the Curves tool, please check out my Curves tool video. But I'm gonna just copy the same techniques here very quickly. Basically, I'm going to do my sort of master channel here first, and then I'm gonna go down the individual channels and just introduce um, some different things into the shadows and the highlights there. All of it's gonna be based on an S curve and it's all gonna be slightly cinema, sim similar, similar. And it's all gonna be slightly similar as we go through, but slightly different tweaks on each channel and that's what's gonna bring out the different colors going on here. My aim here is to have that nice kind of moody dark blue sort of filter going across the entire thing. So I start with my S curve first here and I'm gonna make extra points along these lines as well because I know I'm gonna raise and lower some of this and I'm first of all just gonna raise the blacks at this end. And what I'm doing with that is to try and get that faded look in the shadows. I'm gonna raise that point and then I'm actually gonna dip my shadows ever so slightly in there. I'm gonna leave my midtones alone for the moment but I am gonna pull the highlights down as well. Just follow along that lines and I'm gonna pull all of this down and then yes, including my whites too. So let's just toggle between that. So that's quite nice. We've got that really faded look going over the top of that. Quickly then moving into the other different channels on here, I'm gonna do the same thing, make my S curve across the whole of this, pull slightly up now these are very delicate movements you end up having to make with the curves tool here. And when you check out my other video, you'll see why. I'm gonna pull that down. And I know when people first start doing this, they freak out a bit and they think that is not why I'm after doing. But remember, you've got to edit all three of those channels. You cannot just rely on one. Unless you're just trying to introduce something ever so slightly into the shadows and light, but I'm not doing that. I'm looking at bringing in a lot of contrast here. 
I'm just going to raise my mid-tones down to there. I'm going to bring that right the way down. And push this up. And if you can hear that, the rain has just really started coming down here, but I'm not going to stop the recording, so if you can hear the rain ambience, enjoy it. And then the final channel, the blue one. I tend to always leave the final one uh, that is my aim until last because that's the one I play around with the most but I've done this a fair few times now that I can just about think where I need to put my different points it's around there there we go and you can see this immediately as I drop that I'm pulling that blue that's just overwhelming there and pulling it down into the yellow channel. Now because we've saturated those yellows and we've pushed that yellow tone more towards the orange, it's given us that nice balance of the blue and the orange there. But you can see how subtle that movement is. But you're only going to discover that as you bring in the final sort of edits. There we go, happy with that one. Might just have a quick revisit back on these channels here. Uh, maybe just pull that one up slightly more away from the pinks. There we go, and then check the reds too. That's good, let's finally come back to the curves. I might just drop those mid-tones a bit. And then finally, this is for me like my global sort of edit, so I just kind of tweak this ever so slightly, bring a bit more into the shadows. Drop those darks, drop those lights. And I always deal with this one last again. It's just stuff that I was too scared to do in the rest. Now, now if I toggle between the curves tool, you can see that was our prepared piece and then introducing all of our curves techniques. We get that nice kind of moody dark blue look and you can really see how much color is actually brought back into this. This is why I saturate so much out in the HSL sliders because I know how much is going to be brought back in. If too much is brought in, this is where you can play around with this saturation slider you know, and go for your own personal preference with that. The final thing I'm going to do is come back up top here. Now, maybe that's a little bit too dark for me, actually, so I'm just going to raise that slightly. And I'm just going to bring in a little bit more contrast just for some more definition. Not too much, though. Again, that is my last thing of global edit. So, looking back from the original to that, you can see we've brought back in the unified colours of blue and orange throughout all of this. We've still got that moody look. We can then bring in some masking. So if I get a radial gradient and I want to focus in on that strip there, I'm going to invert that. And I'm just going to bring down my exposure, uh, my shadows, my blacks, and my clarity as well, just to help focus in on the middle. If I wanted to be really detailed, I'd probably then take a brush and start bringing up some more highlighted bits down here, maybe the zebra crossing but I will leave that as it is for today. So there you go, that's how I would do a full sort of cinematic street edit, kind of building upon the Curves Tool video, but if you wanna know more about how that effect is built in the curves, please do check out that video. Same with the calibration as well, there's a couple of calibration techniques there which I've just breezed over, please check out that video too. If you wanna see more examples of these presets, you can get them on my website, the link is below in the description. Other than that, please like, subscribe and comment and I will see you in the next one.